So today we're going to talk about connective tissues. What about them? Well, they connect your body parts and you can tell that from just the name of them. You find them everywhere, in every organ, in every organ system, all the different parts of your body. They're the most common type of tissue found in your body. And the two things that they all have in common is that they have cells and an extracellular matrix. And you remember from Daily Latin Connection that extra means outside or outward. So this matrix is found outside the cells. Well, what do they do? Because there are so many different kinds, they have a variety of different functions. Storage, they transport materials around your body. They provide structure and support. They're used as packing material and filler between organs and structures. They have a defense and protective function. They help bear your body weight. They insulate, they cushion, and they also play a role in defense and repair. So huge numbers of functions. Really important tissue type. So let's get talk about the specific cells that you might find in different types of connective tissue. If you remember from Daily Latin Connection, I believe we use the word site, C-Y-T-E-S, as cells are hollow. So osteocytes, and osteo means bone. Osteocytes are bone cells. Chondrocytes are cartilage cells. The chondro is for cartilage. Adipocytes are for adipose cells or fat cells. Erythrocytes, most of you may remember from bio, as red blood cells. Fibroblasts are a general name for the cells found in tendons and ligaments. And a blast is a cell that produces something. So these fibroblasts actually produce the fibers you find in tendons and ligaments. And um, leukocytes, which again, you may remember from bio as white blood cells. So let's talk about the matrix. It's made up of two substances. The ground substance is sort of the non-cellular stuff. It's got a lot of water in it. Um, it helps with diffusion of material. It also acts as a reservoir for water. We'll talk about that a little bit more. There's the There are these things called adhesion proteins, and it's the glue or the sticky stuff that help keep the cells attached to the fibers. And there are also polysaccharides, and the function of those are to trap water. Now, when we get into talking about the different kinds of connective tissue, tissue, you'll see that the texture varies tremendously. And so the polysaccharides are what help determine the texture. If there are a few polysaccharides, then it's going to be um, really thin, not have a great density. If there's a huge number of polysaccharides, then you're going to have a very dense material. Then you also find within this matrix the fibers. Some connective tissues have lots of fibers, some have some, and some don't have any. So let's talk about the three most common types that you'd find. Collagen, which are called white fibers. They give it a high tensile strength. Elastic or yellow fibers help whatever it is that it, it's part of stretch and recoil to its original shape. And reticular fibers actually make up the internal structure of a soft organ, such as your spleen and your kidney and your lymph nodes. They're very, um, they're, their structure is not quite as organized as you would find in a heart or a lung. So these reticulate tissues help maintain their structure. All right, so classifications. Um, there are actually four classifications, and we'll go over each individually. So this dense connective tissue, which you find in tendons and ligaments, and aponeuroses is, a, is basically a tendon, but it's a sheet of a tendon as opposed to a rope-like tendon. And we'll talk more about those later. Then there's irregular dense connective tissue, which you've actually seen a lot of in looking at your epithelial slides because it's that kind of connective tissue that's right deep to the epithelium. There's loose connective tissues. And now that we've talked about what dense is, the loose kind of makes sense. We've got adipose or fat, which is loose. We have areolar, which is, um, and we'll talk more about this, it's very spidery, spider webby, not spidery, but spider webby. And then there's the reticular, which is just these fibers giving structure to soft organs. There are also fluid connective tissues. So thing, when we talk about connective tissues, it's not necessarily 
directly connecting one thing to another, but in terms of fluid connective tissues, the blood connects every other cell of your body with your lungs for all intents and purposes to bring the gases back and forth. And the lymph is another type of fluid connective tissue. The last classification is supporting connective tissues, and the only one we'll put in there is cartilage. Oh no, wait, this too. Cartilage and bone tissue. Osseous is the name for bone tissue. Okay, we talked about epithelial tissues last week, and we said that all of them are avascular. None of them have any blood supply. Well, in the connective tissues, it varies tremendously. There are a few tissues that are highly vascular, such as bone tissue and reticular tissue. Again, remember, osseous is for bone, reticular is the structure for the spleen and things like that. Um, a poor blood supply you will find in tendons and ligaments. That's part of the reason why they take so long to heal is because they don't have um, a great direct blood supply. The only avascular connective tissue is cartilage. Again, also explains why cartilage is so difficult to heal. So that's the end of our connective tissue notes, and we'll talk about this in class tomorrow. Thanks.